right now on Full Custom Garage. Master Metal Man Ian Roussel transforms a 1923 Sea Cab into a vintage style tow truck. It's Don's pile of parts. <laughs> it is absolutely a basket case. There's stuff from the 40s, there's stuff from the 30s, there's stuff from the 20s. But Ian's client isn't your average car collector. Oh, hell yeah, I'm a hoarder. Well, if I wasn't such a pack rat, I wouldn't have all this stuff. You got your hoarder mentality, and then you got your artist mentality. And when they cross, you know, you come up with cool things like this. As the build progresses, Ian attempts to take the tow truck to the next level. There's nothing like the original stuff. And I like the challenge of putting them together in a convincing way. See you later. Ian has his own ideas on how this is going to look. I'm a little concerned about it. I like things stock. I don't like them modified too much. It's little steps like this that can convert a man like that to the creative process. Typical Don scene. He's got pallets of stuff. So I didn't know if we were looking left or right. He points to this one on the left, and it's a bunch of vintage tin work. Looks like it's an old Ford or something. The thing behind the pile of stuff is a sea cab. It's a really early Ford truck. It's really old, and I think it's cool. So this thing is like 92, 95 years old, yes. something like that. Wow. This thing doesn't even have rust, man. The cab is basically really straight, no rust, has a lot of potential. As old as it is, it's in pretty darn good shape. I've got the frame for it, uh -huh. got some of the fenders. Oh, wow. Yes, this is what started this whole idea. This whole thing started with Don finding this manual hand crank. It's a tow truck winch. It's dated like 1930 or something. Well, that wench has been sitting in storage for 33, 34 years now. I always thought it'd be really cool to have a vintage tow truck, basically to move stuff around here on the compound. I don't have a boom for it, so maybe that's where your magic can come in, is putting this stuff together. Don's missing everything mechanical. He's got a mechanical hand crank winch. He just needs everything else. Oh, heck, that truck's missing a whole bunch of stuff. It doesn't have a motor, it doesn't have a transmission, it doesn't have a drive shaft, it doesn't have front and rear suspension. I mean, it doesn't have a steering column. It is absolutely a basket case of parts with a whole bunch of parts missing. If we could find a rolling chassis, then it's like, just mount this body on there and you know do it kind of hot rod style. Don and I have been working together for such a long time, he's thinking, hey, anything's possible. And it really is because I know that Don's got the parts. Somewhere in this property, he has everything we need to make this happen. Don's got this one-ton dually just sitting there. The way I see it is this is a huge upgrade from 1919. <laughs> this is like 1969, you know? It's like way more developed. This truck is gonna drive like Henry Ford never imagined. But I think it's a little bit, the cab's too small for this. I think this could work, man. I don't see why not. I mean, if we have to cut that cab or do something to this frame, it doesn't matter back here. It's a utility bed. It's just that that nose of the cab is so narrow in the front, we might have to do something. And the frame looks straight. It doesn't look like it's been tweaked or... I think it's a good start, man. Get this cab out of the way and let's get it inside and lay it out. Even though we got a bunch of cool pieces to work with, it's still just a pile of parts, a cab, and a chassis. As I see it, the task here is gonna be getting all these pieces together and just making one unified truck. This is a big project, but I'm totally ready. Every project has some sort of impetus to things that gets you interested in building. This hand crank did it for me. I think if we build the whole truck to reflect this era, I think we'd come up with something really cool. Look at that, just like a club, Ian. Yeah, I'm a little bit relieved now that the uh, we got that cab on the uh, chassis. Ian was talking about we may have to have cut that thing, and I was really reluctant on cutting that. I'm the type of person, I like things simple, I like things stock, I don't like them modified too much. Once we mocked this thing up, it became clear that this thing was going to be anything but a restoration. 
We've got parts from like four different decades and there's a lot of space to fill. There's so many different parts here, it could go in a million different directions. It's Don's pile of parts. <laughs> We're gonna pull out each fender and clip it to the frame, see how it looks, and just kind of come up with a representation of what the truck's gonna be. The main thing I need to build on the rear of the truck is the boom. That's the thing that holds the cable and the winch for towing. This whole thing is gonna be based on like a hook and pulley system. Don's showing me books with a bunch of different materials used. You know, they, they have some really bizarre type apparatuses for towing. Wow, look at that. Isn't it really cool? Let's just make a mock-up and we'll figure out how we're gonna build this thing. Just trying to get some kind of a look, a feel of how tall the thing's gonna be, you know, what proportions. The easiest way was just to take a couple two by fours. Really, the look of it is, you know, it should be proportional to the cab height. We just cut them to size, made a few triangular frames, and just kind of moved them around, saw what it looked like in relation to the height of the roof. Well, when we first started mocking it up, it just didn't look right. It just looks like it's got a little thing stuck on the back. It does. Yeah, standing at this angle, it does. So Ian and I looked at each other and go, this isn't going to get it. We need to come up with something else. Like, if we did use these four members, Back to the winch. Yeah, I think that'll work. I like how the line comes down into the winch. It looks like it's one piece. Yes. Maybe we open this up and create it, you know, like that big crane shape. The whole deal is how this truck looks as a whole. And then finally, after moving the pieces around, you just know when you hit the sweet spot. I think we should go with that. I think this is it. Now that we got this thing mocked up, I'm ready to move on, really get started on this truck. Once Don and I got the basic structure of the boom figured out, it's time to bring it to life. I'm just building this perimeter frame around the base that's gonna be like a subframe that anchors that winch and also holds the uprights. I got a whole bunch of this C channel from Industrial Metal Supply. It's four inch by one and a half. It's a 316s wall. I'm gonna build each side flat on the table and I'll stand them up and then tilt them in and join them at the top. This boom needs to be strong, but it's never gonna pick up really heavy stuff. Because it's a hand crank winch with a pulley, it's got a weight limit. The end result will be that this will be a great rig for Don to use around the yard, around the compound. So the fit up up here is pretty loose because I'm seeing like a big uh, quarter inch plate coming out and making a nice gradual arc so that the hook is a little bit further out from the back of the truck. Once I got the boom structure on the truck, it's all about tying in the hand crank. Now I'm gonna have to build something off the front of this. I really like the idea of keeping this rustic old angle iron frame. It would be easy to just unbolt the winch and put it on something fresh, but the whole look of the truck is like old fashioned. I'll just build a little discreet brace underneath to bolt it to, so it'll be just presenting. It'll be out in the open. And then I'll put a cross member under here that'll support the front of that. Even though we're basing this structure on what Don and I mocked up, I still am trying to bring some kind of a design element into it. The winch looks good there. The last thing for me to do is just mock up some kind of an end cap. All the tow trucks we're looking at seem to have this detail at the end where the cable came over and then had a pulley that kind of drooped down. So I'll make an oversized one of these cardboard deals. The big issue I'm having is this negative space with the plate on top. The fix may be to truss it out with some 316s flat bar on the outside of this whole thing. Like, come off of that plate and down, and then back, and then back. Once the structure of the boom was in place, I'm just thinking about designs that can crisscross this pattern. It's a pretty weird triangular shape. So I'm just laying out tape in random directions just to get an idea of how the space will be filled. 
I'm not really sold on this truss idea. I put in three cross pieces and felt like it was gonna work. I kept adding to it and it just got out of control. I wanted Don to come in, check it out, just see what he thought. Wow. That's looking good, Ian. I'm getting carried away, man. Got the back hacked off. Yeah. yeah the problem I'm having is with this tape. Um, yeah, never, it's a little busy, isn't it? Act as if that isn't there for now. Okay. <laughs> Ian had put a bunch of tape on the structure that we were doing. The whole reason I was getting carried away with this tape was uh, I had a couple pieces of flat bar, and I loved the fact that if we used that big quarter inch plate you have mm -hmm. and put it on the outside and create some kind of a truss structure over the top of this so it's really dimensional. I think on that strapping it was just gonna be way too busy. I think the way that I built things is just understanding that I don't know what's best. <laughs> I'm just leaving it open to happen. But I really like this shape, how it's taking it. It's, uh... I thought by turning the C-channels backwards like that, showing them, it just made it look a little more old-fashioned. I think you're right. But... And that's what we, we want to go with, the older look. Well, again, with the trussing, maybe we leave it out. It just, I thought it would be really cool to you know, make it very fancy. I was really trying to make something out of this boom. I was going for the Eiffel Tower, and Don just wanted something way simpler. I think you nailed it like this. This will work absolutely great like this. I thought he might get a little too carried away on it. It's hard to keep up with Ian. He moves so fast, but I like it the way it is. There's a ton of different design elements needed to bring this thing together. My process is to stay open to new ideas, and that's just how I work. I'm not sure Don's on the same page. I'm just gonna keep working through this and Don's gonna go grab more parts. You can see here how this is spreading out so wide. So the wheel will fit inside here, perfect. The cable comes through into the wheel, uh, bolt passes right through here, and the other wheel will be out here. But I'll clamp this in after I get this stuff welded up. The triangle shape of this boom was so irregular in the way that the main support beams came together, I felt that a top cap would just simplify the whole deal. Coming up with the design for this top cap, I thought it was just gonna have one pulley. But I realized that the look of it required two. It seemed like the cable was going to be rubbing on the framework, so by putting two pulleys, it allowed it to come up over the top and then out of the back just a little more smoothly. Seeing the boom and the winch on the truck is awesome. It's really the start of what this vintage truck should look like. Don had this gas tank he was thinking about using. The tank Don showed me is just kind of generic. It looks like something that should be under the bed. This truck's got one lacking area between the bed and the cab, and I think building a custom gas tank is gonna set it off. Ian has his own ideas on how this is gonna look, and I have my own ideas too, so I'm a little concerned about it. Move it, go on. Sorry, Charlie. I've built a lot of different gas tanks over the years, but for this truck, I got a really cool idea for like an old school oval gas tank. Let's see what happens. From the start of my interest in metalworking, I was really trying to build stuff from scratch, you know, by, by myself. The reason I started using found objects is because there were curved shapes of metal that were way more accessible. So I could get into the actual building of larger components instead of focusing on these small details on curving metal. Back in the day, they were making some cool stuff out of very basic materials, so I built the thing the same way. It's kind of caveman technology, but it works. It's a stamped steel cap. There's a million ways to make a gas tank. This is one. Could just take the metal, 
pack weld it and roll it around. Instead of doing it that way, I got this slip roller from Woodward. I had been wishing for one of these for years. My plan is to make a full tube out of this sheet metal, uh, smaller than this large radius, and probably right around this radius, hopefully. That way I can just kind of open it up, slide it into place around these two end caps, MIG weld it in place, and then TIG weld it so that it's sealed liquid tight. The next step is the inlet and the outlet. I put this little fitting on the bottom here and uh, I got this old gas tank. I'm gonna cut the filler neck off and put it on here. I wanted to make this tank and the brackets to hold it look like something you'd see on a vintage work truck. What I'm looking to accomplish here is match this radius with the mellow curve and then I'm gonna pull it tight over a piece of pipe. That way I'll have a, more of an egg shape instead of a perfect circle. It just depends what you have to work with, but it was just easier to start from scratch because we had it custom built in proportion to this vehicle. That's what we got, dog. Ian nailed it with that hand-built fuel tank. That is just so darn cool. When he saw what I was building and how it was gonna add to the look of the truck, he was on board 100%. It's interesting the way that ties in between the cab and the bed of the truck to have that space taken up by a fuel tank. It looks absolutely perfect and vintage for that vehicle, too. It's little steps like this that can convert a man like that to the creative process. Small victory in this grand war. We're getting in deep. We got mismatched sheet metal from all kinds of things. I brought, I brought in another hodgepodge of stuff, sheet metal and old fenders that I want to utilize on this project. I'm not sure how he's going to make it work, but I'm sure he's going to make it work. Well, those fenders are looking slick, though. I have some old running boards over at the uh, over at the shop. I'll bring those over the next time I come on. Maybe we come over. Maybe we can utilize them. Yeah, because I think that's the whole mode with this truck. It's just all recycled stuff. It's like all the cool parts laying around. Just pile them on and make a tow truck. He had two quarter panels from an old truck that he found. He had two Model A fenders left over from the rear of his hot rod. I think I could widen these fenders and make them fit on a dually rear end on this chassis. There's nothing like the original stuff, and I like the challenge of putting them together in a convincing way. So, we got three pieces that don't belong together. My mission is to get it right. We're gonna cut the whole lip off of this inside of the Model 8 fender. And I'm gonna cut the lip off of this truck bed. Join them together with the sheet metal flange and then position it on the truck. I think that's the easiest way. All right, so that is on. It's already starting to look more utilitarian. It's the whole thing with this truck. It's gotta look like a work truck. For me, the most straightforward way through this is to just put in the giant panel first I have a couple detail pieces where this fender detail comes in to the, to the bedside, front and rear, the rear being the more challenging one. But at least now there's a big structure holding it all together so I can mock up the bed on the chassis. What I just accomplished was just getting a preliminary setup on these uh, dimensions. Don's parts pile is ever flowing. He brought in these old running boards and who knows where they came from. There's a number of problems. Obviously we're way short in our reach from the front to the rear. This fender is similar, is a similar year to this body. So what they would have is like this little apron, this little splash pen and the running board would be at this height which looks pretty cool, especially if you're jumping in and out of the vehicle. But 
that fender is much lower, which brings the running board way lower. This is where it's really at with this project, taking these mismatched parts and making the side profile of the truck one cohesive line. I gotta nail it. We're at this Truckin' for Kids truck show. We're at Irwindale Speedway, Irwindale, California. Trying to get some inspiration on how these guys are putting these rigs together. Don's truck is a bunch of mismatched parts and it's really a work vehicle in essence. So coming out here to check out these working trucks that they put a lot of flair into, I just want to check out what's going on. I drive this. And the whole thing is there's so many different variations on the cab to trailer or whatever they're doing for, for working. Uh, you have all your standard cabs, but it's really the fenders and the running boards that make everything link up. Some of the trucks look pieced together, other ones just flow, and that's what I'm trying to do, make them flow. See how they rolled from the cab, they rolled right down into the running board with that diamond plate. And that's kind of what I'm gonna have to do with Don's is create this curved rocker panel that comes all the way down from the door. Uh, this one's much more exaggerated, but that's the same challenge that I'm facing. This whole thing is really about working trucks. So there's a lot of new vehicles out here, but I knew they had a class with older rigs, and that's really what I came to check out, the old stuff. This is kind of the same era as Don's rear fenders, and you can see how they just swoop back so gracefully. I mean, these are the fenders I would put on the truck if we had them. I guess this truck most represents what I'm trying to accomplish, you know? We got these big, wide running boards that are totally functional, and you have a more curvy fender, and this one is obviously a factory part, and they join up perfectly. Coolest thing to see was all the different arrangements of the running boards and fenders. Each truck has its own unique combination, depending on the ride height and the fenders used. This truck kind of mimics what Don's got going on. These fenders are just massive and they really tuck the tires in. It's a great look. It makes the whole truck look super low. The whole thing with coming out to this truck show was just to get inspired to finish. It's always a long haul detailing and getting all the pieces fit up and finished. And really this is like, you know, these are finished show trucks and it just gives you a lot of inspiration. In order to get these fenders to fit, I had to get an old engine just as a placeholder and install the steering column. I used the steering column out of the 69 cab from the donor chassis. We could replace this 70s styled steering wheel with something more period correct later. So these are the fenders. I made a couple marks to set it up. I measured these fenders up front to rear. The clearances are cool. They're even, they're in place. I'm gonna tack them on. The next challenge is getting these running boards in place. They need a pretty heavy support structure that has to tie into the frame. I like these running boards. It's a really great running board. I'm not disputing that. My concern is the transition from the radius to the front fender detail. So I think I'm gonna end up building off of the running board instead of cutting it back. Yo! Brought you some more material. Don shows up with more random scraps. Here he is wheeling in some old diamond plate. Well, you're right on time, man. Yeah, well, perfect. Check out oh, what wow. I got. Check hey, out. those are looking slick. That's yeah, so cool seeing this old stuff. It's been in stock up against that house for a long time. Various states of pileage. Well, if I wasn't such a pack rat, I wouldn't have all this stuff. Now, it's the true. wife thinks I'm out of my mind, well, but... Well, she's not the only one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, I'm a hoarder. I definitely, definitely I collect stuff, I hoard stuff. I don't get rid of anything unless the wife has some say to it, but uh, having Ian to be able to utilize most of this stuff has just been absolutely great. And it might work out for a parade, too. Don's really happy with the progress on this truck. Still a lot more to do, but I think we're on the same page. 
It sure worked out so good, didn't it? So it's 69 Chevy steering column. I just shortened it up. We started talking about the rear of the truck. What are you thinking about this rear bumper? Do you have any material or like any guesstimate of, of what you want to see here? Don said he's got a great bumper, and I think this diamond plate might be just what I need. Don had a ton of this good used diamond plate. We're trying to decide what the finishing elements of all this bodywork was gonna be. And since he's got this stuff and the color matches most of the rest of the truck, I think we're gonna use it. We're gonna put a diamond plate step here and the other side, there's gonna be a diamond plate detail on the front bumper and the whole rear of the truck is gonna be diamond plate. So I just built a little bit of extension off of this bedside just to come out past the chassis. There's two tabs under here that'll bolt the bed on. As usual, different ideas are spinning around in my head as to how to tie in this diamond plate with the rest of the body. I'm trying to put some elements on the side to coincide with the curves of the fender. I want the radius to match uh, the rear of the fender, so I'm using the fender as a guide. My whole process is always use cardboard <laughs> to mock it up, because it really just helps you visualize it. Um, you could have sketched it out if you had the time. Instead, I just took a piece of an old box and put it on there, and I think it's cool. This is my whole process, and you know what? It's fun. This is the part I enjoy, is figuring stuff out. It's like feeling out the look of the vehicle. It works for me. Lovely. Next, we will cut a simple square cap. There's going to be a big trailer hitch set up in here that's incorporated with the bumper. I'm not going to really know how that's going to happen until I get the trailer hitch from Don. So I'm just going to tack this rear panel on and take it back off when I need to work on it. The pipe that I brought in for Ian for this uh, bumper on the back of this tow truck actually came off one of my other trucks. Don was telling me about this cool truck bumper he had. And he brings it over. It's just a steel pipe with a trailer hitch welded to it. And I think I can make it work. You got your hoarder mentality, and then you got your art artist mentality. And, and when they cross, you know, you come up with cool things like this. That's what I'm talking about, being open to the nuance. You know, an idea becomes a, a reality through a few different steps, and this is just one example of that. Don wants two trailer hitches. He's got one trailer that's heavy duty, it needs to be a little taller, so I just cut a hole in the pipe and added one more. This back bumper was a real pleasure to see finished. I was very satisfied with it. There's a lot of pieces on this truck we still have to connect. We're moving into the eye of the storm. After coming back from the truck show, I started talking with Don about finishing this project as far as paint and bodywork. At first, we were going to just leave this truck bare metal. But Don saw this Packard I painted. It was black cherry, and he thinks he wants this truck two-toned black cherry and flat black. I replaced the diamond plate on the side of the bed with a flat sheet. That way the whole bed can be painted one color. I really like the steps on the back side of the bed. That was part of what I was thinking with this diamond plate structure. So bent over a couple pieces of diamond plate, formed them around, and just let them flow into the rear Model A fenders. This is a problem area, the way the fender sloped down. I wanted to connect it to the rear of the bed. I'm just gonna mimic that mirror image to the other side, the driver's side. Weld her up, put her on the road. We got a car to pick up. That'll hold her. Front running board's gonna be a bit of a challenge, but this diamond plate is here. It's 
used material, it matches the bed. Just gonna try to put a roll in it that will match the radius on that running board. Don really likes the old truck running board he had up front. So to make the diamond plate match, I'm gonna try to get away from this hard welded edge. I'm trying to make it look like this running board is about 20 inches longer, but it changes texture. There's gonna be a rubber element, I'm pretty sure like a tread pad up front where you get into the truck. But back here where it's all utility, I just want it to be super strong and have a radius that matches this front running board. The big missing piece in this whole equation is this area here. Once again, Don's got the parts. We found some side pans from a Model A. See the way it worked on the Model A. Came down below the running board and then this angle came up into the fender. We run into the same issue with the running board in that it's short coming into the bed. To me, it's gonna be better to make this part. We're trying to tie in the fender, the running board, and the cab. It's just gonna look better if it's scratch built. First thing is to just pull this around. So it's about 90 degrees. See the sheet metal break makes a really hard angle. This makes a nice mellow angle. So that was like, you saw two seconds of pulling, but it, it stretched the metal into this really rigid compound curve. It's like a puffed shape. I'm all about trying to just find stuff and modify it so I can use it, but sometimes there's just no other alternative. And that's really where your craftsmanship comes from is when you can just build from scratch. But the curve, indexes just below the body and comes down to the running board. So now I gotta trim this top side to fit roughly and then uh, I'll measure out my flange to cover those holes, turn it back under like a hem edge, tack welder in. The 20 gauge sheet being super flimsy, you can see by putting these bends in it, it's very strong now and that's cool. This side panel's gonna work. The real hard part is getting the running board to fit up with the front fender. So that's gonna be a pretty big deal to make that work fabrication-wise. This truck coming together, we gotta get started on the engine work. Don says he's got a small block Chevy, but of course it's buried out in the yard somewhere and we gotta go get it. Out here in Don's back 40, he's got stuff piled so deep, you have to call in the big crane to get it out. Don's treasure's down there. So instead of moving all these cars and everything, we're just gonna move the racks. Finally, we're out of the shop, you know? Get away from the truck for a minute. This is a really intense build because it's all business. This engine was looking pretty rough. Don's claiming that this is the buried treasure, and I'll tell you, it was buried. Take her up. This engine that I've got is a good engine. It's a small block Chevy. I've probably had it about maybe 13, 14 years. I tell you, Don, this is looking good, man. This is like new old stock. New old this is a stock. fresh engine. <laughs> if ever I've seen fresh stuff, <laughs> this is it. This is great. See you later. So to get out and swing around on the crane for a while, yeah, it helps clear the head. I'm gonna clean this engine up a little bit, pull off all the unnecessary parts, and ship it back over to Ian, because I know he's got a lot of work to do on it. We got a brand new transmission from Monster, and so it's really like 90% there. This piece is really subtle. It's a small part, but if I don't get it right, it's gonna be totally noticeable. I'm using the detail on the end of the fender, which is a rod shape, and I'm just gonna make a gradual S-curve down into the bottom of the running board and sheet it. You know, it doesn't belong that way, but at least it's gonna match. You know, would, you'd never see that anywhere else. You really don't grow unless you're, you know, challenged. You know, there's gotta be some pain there, like working out, you know? So even though I'm not able to go out and just do my funky dance, it's like a workout. This thing is just pushing my skills to make something happen. Yeah, to try to create this weird, it's almost like a horn, like a bull horn, right? A section of that, like a steer horn. And to create that really tight curve, 
In one piece of metal, we require a huge amount of stretching. So I'm gonna shrink the two insides of each curve and they'll lap over. This is the side profile of the wheel arch going down into the fender. And that's why I chose this method to put it together, because at least it draws a flowing line. So the whole idea here is the next piece is gonna come off of this uh, existing fender and just wrap right over it. So there'll be a seam about a half inch in. That's why I just curled that edge pretty tight. I've come a long way with this truck, but to me it's all about the finishing details. If you can pull it off convincing, then it's a real winner. This rod, you see, comes straight through. It drops down and into the bottom of the running board. And this little flange here just is what it is. It disappears and goes right under. I'm really happy with this. It's one of the main issues I needed to make work, and I think it came out fine. The way he molded it in and blended it in, I mean, it just looks like it came from the factory. All right, to start off the front end, I thought the radiator and grill shell would be the best place, start front row and center. Uh, we're on to the more enjoyable part of it, which is accessorizing. Don had a couple sections of a Model A rear bumper, so I shot him an idea of using those on the front of this chassis. Our front end design has two side pieces of existing Model A bumpers, so we're ending up with a, with a space in the middle to fill. So Don had these steaks from the garden. Don had these garden steaks. I don't know what he was thinking, but... And you know, I'm always open to, to nuance, but I don't know if this tent steak is really the right choice. Sometimes when stuff doesn't look right, it just leads you to a better idea. I think we're gonna have to come up with some kind of a center element that just stands on its own, and then it has these two little side flaps. The rear bumper is a big tube, so this obviously is going to be a mismatch. It's a work truck, so a tube bumper is appropriate in the back. I'm thinking like some kind of a utility front bumper, like you'd see on a, a you know a work truck, a fire truck or something. I'm going to cut off the front section of the frame, and I have an idea of a way to make this work. I had this super old school toolbox. It's definitely period correct. So maybe I'm just gonna make a little tray and I'll just hold the toolbox there. That's something a tow truck would have, you know? This toolbox came from the guy that taught me almost everything I initially learned with sheet metal work. I was working in roofing in New York City, making gutters, all kinds of decorative copper elements, and this was the dude's toolbox. It's legit. I like little details like this. It gives the project cool elements that have their own story. I got the headlights mounted on their stands. And it's cool too because it really does have a Model A feel. You know, looking at it from here, if you know, you know the front fenders are a Model A. But the grill, the placement of the headlights, the style of the headlights, and the curved fenders and running board, it's uh, looks a little bit more updated than your 1923 C cab. For the windshield frame, Don had this really neat the oval tube. I don't know what it's from, but I think it'll serve our purpose perfectly. On this cab, I have pictures I took from the internet, and it looks like the windshield is about this tall, but it just sits up inside. It's the weirdest thing, because you can see the roof is way wider than the windshield. They were never intended to match. It was more like an air deflect, or A, it was a wind shield. It just shielded you from the wind, and that's where the term came from. Well, I'm gonna TIG weld all this because it's gonna make a nice little weld bead. Hopefully I won't have to sand or do any detail work to this. It'll just be a nice stainless steel TIG weld. Looks like an old truck. So Don is gonna get to paint and all the final details on this project together. It's almost wrapped. I can't wait to see it finished. Ian nailed this thing, it's unbelievable. The stuff that I gave him to work with, 
he knocked it out of the park. I mean, look at that truck. It is just absolutely beautiful. This one was really getting to me. The mismatch of parts was bothering me to no end. There's stuff from the 40s. There's stuff from the 30s. There's stuff from the 20s. And then the drivetrain and frame is from the 60s. The whole challenge here was using the parts that Don wanted. The hand crank was really the impetus behind the whole thing. The truck was styled around that era hand crank. So that's my favorite part of the rig. And really, without it, it wouldn't have been this truck at all. It went from a pile of parts on a pallet to an operating tow truck. Ann had built Patty this electric dune buggy that she can drive around the compound here. She drove it until the batteries were dead. And then we went and picked her up. We put a hook on it and towed it back for her. The whole thing here was getting Don his fantasy truck. I'm charged up, and Don is stoked. Don added all the final details to really finish out this project. The wooden bed and that giant old school hook really give it that vintage feel. Working with Ian on this project really opened my mind to a lot of things, and this project came out killer. I mean, it came out way better than I expected it. Don's totally into this truck. He's got a huge stash of projects, and the possibilities are endless. 